And he makes his grand entrance onto the set, carefully constructed. Wolf Wolf Bob, how are you today? Greetings, Mark. Uh, I uh, I think we're going to have a little conversation about uh, some material you did, uh, 2006, I believe. Um, yes. But it's never been released to the general public. Our association members have uh, had access to it for quite some time. Uh, so it's the Kalimba. So tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, it's um, Man and Kalimba, I, I was introduced to him by uh, Grand Tuhan Gahe when I was training with him at his home in uh, uh, Bacolod and, and Neighbors Occidental. Only one day of training, but it made a huge difference for me. The, you know, the man had some genuinely distinctive uh, concepts and ideas. And uh, he had real heavy hands. He had real pan and tukin, And his staff game really opened the door for my thinking. And uh, he shared it with me at the time. He said, not until after I'm gone. And so I, when I learned that he had passed Grand Tuan, Gahe gave me the green light to share the material. But I kept it in the association. And two reasons. One is I want members of the association to have an advantage and access to special material. And uh, that continues to be the case. But I also figure 17 years later, uh, you know, they, they've gotten a pretty good lead time on, on this material. And folks, there's lots more in there. But uh, someone posted a question on, on the bid lesson and I was answering it. And as I was watching the bid lesson, I said, wow, this is a really good one. And I think this be worthy of a download. Very well shot. Uh, we had uh, Ron Gabriel on camera and we had uh, Benjamin Girl Lonely Dog assisting me. And he always understands exactly what the point is I'm trying to communicate. And so he, you know, we have a good rapport. So, you know, the footage went very well. Um, and, you know, so the, the, the deep concept here is emerging, you know, as, as we look to learn how to really fight for what was the first thing in the first series with Top Dog, power. And so, you know, as, you know, you know, this is how you hit hard. This is how you move your feet. Here's a roof block. Uh, here's, you know, the Sagitas introduction to, you know, sort of what would later become what we call the, the snaky stick. Uh, and so forth, you know, but most essentially a smash and bash kind of a game. You dominate through, you know, movement and power and so forth. And the other thing that people tend to naturally do is they begin figuring out how to apply the art is evade and counter. Whoa! And then they come back in. And those skills can be developed to a very high level and you can be a very good fighter with nothing but that. But, um, there's an additional nuance that's possible, which is, uh, and this is uh, part of, you know, the DBMA seven ranges theory. There's a, a range where weapons collide. So instead of just the Largo Medio Corto, we have the seven ranges. The, you know, the first range we call snake because the stick is snaking around. Then we have weapon range where the where bubbles collide. In a, in, a, in a knife duel, probably not important. In a staff fight, probably real important. In a stick fight, maybe, maybe not, but certainly not if you don't have any ideas about how to do it. Um, then Largo, maybe a quarto, clinch, and ground. And so if you look, for example, at the, the Dos Tricas game, you know, where does it, um, you know, where does it start? Where we have a guy who's here when it gets a double stick because he's getting hit in both hands when he starts doing the patterns. He goes, a lot of people just naturally go to jab, cross, shield, you know, club, you know, sword, whatever, you know, this natural alignment. So against this structure, one of the keys in the Dos Tricas game is the concept of hitting the weapon. And so the guy's here like this. He doesn't think of this stick here as a target. And so when we knock that aside, in that moment, the, the, the guy who had it thought he had a shield that's out of the way, now he's only got one stick. And because, for example, we're coming around, we have two. And in that moment, we take advantage of two sticks against one. And because we're also developing the skill of moving our feet uh, in a one-to-one -one relationship with our stick work, we get across the triangle from the third dimension. But part of that combination was the concept of hitting the weapon in a simple way. That would be an example of a merge. Um, 
And then in subsequent and vid lessons, we have the subversive hand because once he starts blocking here, you come at it from the inside and so forth. And as I was watching this vid lesson, uh, you know, about the material, you know, the ideas that I learned from Mount and Kalimba, he's got a, a, a higher level because he's not only knocking the stick aside, he's also coming at the hand. He's going down at the hand. And um, if you're simply standing in front of somebody who's blazing sticks at you, well, uh, you know, how are you going to get there? He's going to, you know, he's going to get there first and you're going to be the one who's getting dinged. So the understanding how to get there, you know, it requires that you have the fundamentals of I can move my feet in coordination with what I'm trying to do with my stick. You know, these are building blocks to this. This is a more advanced game. But for somebody who's like, okay, I can do this and I can hit the bag hard and I can do triangles with my feet and, you know, blah, blah, all of that. But how do I use it? How do I put the pieces together? What I, what he showed me that day really opened my thinking. And so this game here, there's a, you know, it shows a game here like this. And so learning at first at staff, the staff's a longer weapon. So hitting the weapon is going to be more and more important. And it built on what I learned from in that trip from Grand Tuangahe, you know, the reverse angle one here like this that we call the Malayu because it comes from his uh, Grand Tuangahe's Malayu Sibat uh, system. And so instead of being on the inside of the angle, the Mount and Columba was showing how to get it on the outside angle surface of the strike. And as I mean, you know, so with staff, it's it's a good way to open the door into this concept. But once you have it, you can also apply it with stick. So it can be done single stick, or you know, you're you're familiar in the bid lessons that you know we have the time machine game with time machine game, the near stick is the Columba stick. And the far stick is bolo game and so forth, a higher order game, blah, 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 blah. But so this vid lesson here, I think, is a really nice, and the, this download here is a nice way to see that this understanding and knowledge survives. You know, one of the things that happened in part of the conversation happened not in Columbus, I offered to do a DVD of him. And he said, no, why not? And he says, I don't wouldn't want somebody using my stuff against me. And, you know, this is a very traditional, you know, uh, way of thinking. And it also means that somebody who had a tremendous amount to offer the art, a lot of that understanding passed with him. And so, you know, there's this balance, to, you know, because, you, you know, today we see a lot of people just competing for attention on the Internet. You know, a lot of what I call the, you know, the look at me clips. Uh, you know, people trying to drum up business and everyone's, you know, look at me, look at me, and this and that. And that sort of tends to homogenize everything. The things that are distinctive and very special about the true depth of the Filipino martial arts in such an environment, they can get lost or not transmitted and not passed down. And so one of the things that I've tried to do as, as a child of the art over the years, we you know did the grandfather speak uh, DVD, which was not a, you know, going into it, knew it was not going to be a financial success. We had the grandfather speak too uh, with my escrow Sonny Unpod, knew it wasn't going to be a financial success. But, you know, you know um, there's stuff there that's very special and that um, needs to be transmitted in a way that its specialness is perceived and understood and appreciated and that the credit is given because what happens is if you know um you know this is something you know from our conversations when i always dance with about like well if i put a clip out someone else is going to steal it and you know like that you know um uh tom meadows years ago said the most common system in the filipino martial arts is that we have that two system uh, now and um i'm not truth to that um and so one of the things that I want to accomplish here is that, you know, by playing this out, and there's some footage of Mon and Kalimba demonstrating in there, and you can see, like, no, that's not like anything else I've seen elsewhere. And, I, you know, going on a tangent here, how rare, um, you know, in training with Grandmaster Ramiro Escalilla, 
who's got also has a very distinctive system. And he's, I persuaded Gurren Asano to come down to a seminar he's doing in Orange County, and that's how the two of them met and so forth. But one of the things he does when he's teaching a seminar, he, he, he goes, have you seen this before? You know, and if the person say, tries that we have that too, then he'll go, well, then I have nothing to show you and walk away. <laughs> Very sly man. But, you know, the, you know, but if you were willing to acknowledge like, no, we don't have that too, then he would be willing to share it with you. And so, you know, with this footage, you know, I want this understanding to be understood and appreciated in its own right. And that, you know, people who are influenced by it should say, you know, this comes, you know, from Mon and Kalimba via DBMA. And so this game has really helped, you know, deepen my understanding in a lot of ways here like this. And there's, as you know, from the vid lessons, there's, you know, out of this, we developed the four rings theory. So we got the Malaya stroke, which is an Inasano, uh, 1342, an Inasano 16. Um, yeah, out of this material, it's like, oh, here, if he comes the other side, we'll win. And when we block, oh, there's the Inasano 7. And, you know, these things start revealing themselves when you're doing the Inasano 17 count. This one here, uh, when would I ever use that? Well, when I'm rotating this way and the backhand comes in, there's my power block. There's it is. You know, so, you know the, depth, the levels of the art reveal themselves in the doing. But if you don't have the foundation and the fundamentals, if you don't have that alphabet, you know, you only need a few letters to write some words. I can give you, you know, D-O-G. What can you write with that? You can write dog. And the other side of that is God. Uh, aha. Anyway, um, but you're going to want more letters. Some of them you don't use as often, but when you need them to write a word, you need them. And as you go deeper into things, you, know, you start having a, a deeper vocabulary and a better, uh, a deeper ability to express yourself in the fight. 